Hello, I'm Matthias Anderson, and uh, we're coming to you live again from Author Summit 2022 at Pluralsight headquarters. I have with me today uh, David Tucker, and uh, you may have seen some of his courses on Pluralsight. You may have seen him uh, do a number of the YouTube videos or other live streams. Um, today, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about content creation. Uh, but first, let's have uh, you introduce yourself a little bit, if you don't mind, David. Yeah, absolutely. So as Matthias said, my name is David Tucker. I am, I've been now working with Pluralsight for about three and a half years creating courses. Mm -hmm. I did some of that you know, earlier on with other companies, but I do that. I do, like you said, live stream work. I do some of the recurring shows and other things here. So uh, I've, I've certainly kind of been around the block a few times in terms of creating content over the course of my career. Awesome. Well, we're doing a live stream right now, yes. partly about live streams, but not just. <laughs> right. um, but I wanted to mention that uh, we are currently sitting here with uh, um, the availability, availability to see your questions as you're typing them. Um, we can try and take them live, um, but you have to type them if if you want yes. us, us to answer them. So um, let's uh, let's start though a little bit with uh, um, what you were uh, talking about a little bit earlier before we started about uh, creating content. People yep. are wanting to get into creating content. Content, um, where should they start? Like, what, what's the situation here? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And it's one I think a lot of developers who suddenly realize, like, hey, I really enjoy learning with people or helping other people learn. Mm -hmm. They think, I see all this content out there. I'd love to create that too. And, and as a side benefit, I'd love to maybe have this be kind of a, you know, a side hustle where there's aspects of my income that are actually coming in from content creation. Mm. However, here's the problem. Mm. When I see on, on Twitter or wherever else, or even in our, our Discord for Pluralsight, and you see people talking about this kind of thing, everybody's first stop is, oh, I, I need to create a YouTube channel, mm. right? <laughs> I'm going to do that, right? And I'm going to you know, become the next you know, whomever, you know, put, ev put whoever's name in there. Mm -hmm. And they think that is the best way to create content. Now, I'll say this. That is a great way to get stuff out there. I'm not arguing that at all. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, is if you're a developer and you say, hey, I want to create content to help other developers, but... I also want to eventually be compensated for my time that I'm putting into creating this content. Mm -hmm. My argument is YouTube is one of the worst ways to go down that path. It can be great for building your brand, getting your name out there, yeah. but I think there's better ways that a lot of developers can, can follow if they want to go down that path. So, uh, okay, so just to, to set the context then, um, a lot of uh, the situation here is that people are working in technology yes. and they want to put that uh, technology understanding and learning and experiences to use um, to share with other people and potentially get some income associated with that. Exactly. So if not YouTube, where would you suggest that people then take a look at instead? What, what should they do? Yeah, I think one of the questions I ask, and I'm, I'm going to get to your answer, I, I promise, in just a minute. <laughs> it's right? all right. But one of the things I ask people is, do you want to create developer content or do you want to market your content? Mm. Now, for some people, they're really good at both. Okay. And, if you, and if you were really want to go down that path, that's great, right? You can go out and you can market what you have. You can post consistently and all of those things. But here, here's a situation I was in. So early on, I had created some developer content early on in my career, and it ended up becoming really popular. And I thought, hey, this, this is easy. I can you know just go out there and do this and <laughs> put my stuff out and everybody's going to find it. And it that magic never really happened again. Mm. And so I thought, okay, well, I need to figure out who has the eyeballs that I want to reach, okay. right? So obviously you and I both do a lot in cloud. So when I started looking to come back into content creation, I spent a lot of time when I was working at an agency doing other things and focusing on my job. But when I came back to this, mm -hmm. I said, who has the cloud eyes that I want to reach mm -hmm. so that I'm not talking to a group of two people that I want to try to grow into a group of 10,000. Right. I go to a place that already has 10,000 yeah. and I post my content there. Right. So what I did, you know, in that case was I created some sample content and I did push it out to YouTube, but it was so that I could turn around and go to other companies and say, hey, here's some examples of what I'm doing. Like, I'd love to create that content for you. Mm. So I tell developers all the time, find who is reaching the people you want to reach and maybe just go, you know, use the contact form, reach out to them and say, hey. I think I could create some content that would be beneficial to you and your viewers. Right. And the advantage of that is you're automatically, you know, injected into this much larger audience mm. that it didn't take you two years to build up on your own YouTube channel, for example. That's a really good point. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, 
in in some cases, people can go out and reach uh, reach out to companies or organizations or um, some sort of a, a, a place, a community yes. where there mm-hmm. are already people. Um, one of the things I would just add to that is that uh, in some cases, putting something out there um, yes. can then turn into something better as well. I know as an example, um, when we were uh, starting out the A Cloud Guru blog, mm-hmm. um, we were reaching out to various authors on Medium who had already written something Absolutely. and saying, hey, could we syndicate your thing? Because right. we want to have technical content like right. yours associated with us. Yep. And oh, look, it's good for everyone, right? Uh, it yes. builds brand. There's all sorts of benefit as well, um, potentially uh, compensation specifically for the syndication yep. and all sorts of things like that. Um, so what's something else that uh, that people can think about then? Um, or do you want to talk more about the, the blogging? Or like, where do you want to go well, next I, to that? I, first of all, I would just throw out there, because I think a lot of people miss this too, is that there are so many different types of content. OK, that's a great place. Some people want to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Some people, I mean, that scares them to death. They have no desire to do that. And that's fine. But I look at, like you mentioned, we have blogs. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, more core style content like what we have, you know, with Pluralsight and Cloud Guru. You also have things uh, in addition to that, like we talked about live streams. So more, hey, let's bring developers alongside. Let's do something together kind of content. You also have interactive Um, learning content. So things like labs and, you know, working in sandboxes and the like. So there's so many different areas. And to be honest, if you're a new author, I don't think you're going to know how much you like each of those until you get a chance to actually try them out. Right. So I would encourage people to find ways to push out a lot of different types of content. The other thing I would encourage people to do, and because this, I think, is one of the things people miss the most, reach out to somebody who's already doing what you want to do Mm -hmm. and ask them for advice. I mean, I, I tell you, it's crazy. I mean, I, I have a few people reach out to me for advice, but, you know, I would have, I would take time. I would take, you know, I'd set up a call and actually talk to people, you know, when they reach out to me for advice and say, hey, here's here's how I got started. Here's what I think in today's climate would make the most sense. And most content creators are actually pretty open to doing that. So I would just yeah. encourage people to take advantage of that resource. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I've done the same thing, uh, talked with people. Um, I, I will, as a Canadian especially, apologize that I am not always up to date on all of the notifications and messages, but um, the the... Uh, the reaching out to people is a really good idea. And sometimes uh, pinging again uh, because, you know, things fell through the cracks or whatnot. Um, but uh, there, there are communities all over the place, I yes. think, is one of the, the key things. So reaching out directly to, um, to somebody on a community. But sometimes in other cases, something like uh, jumping onto uh, the Plural Site Discord channel yes. um, and having conversations there, I think that those can actually roll into more opportunities as well. Um, I know we've had a lot of people who have done that, who have engaged with the community and then started doing more stuff. Yeah, I was gonna, that's what I was going to say. I know oh, yeah. people that have started off just interacting on Discord and then have ended up creating courses down yeah. the road or have ended up you know, engaging in other ways. So that's absolutely a great way to do it. Get involved with the community. And again, show value in whatever way that is really unique to you. And again, maybe it is you have a blog and you have a YouTube channel. And like you mentioned, you put things out there that are about show pieces. Like, hey, this is an example of the kind of work that I do because that will give you something to send to people. But you're not you're not under any maybe delusions that you're gonna make, you know, a million dollars on YouTube in the first three months of putting, you know, your your one tutorial video up. Yeah. But in the same point, it, it does give you a way to build your brand so that when you go into those communities, you can say, listen, I'm new creating this content, but here's some examples of what I have. What can I do better? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, just one example, my own um, history of how I came to this role um, was that I was joining in the A Cloud Guru uh, discussion forum community, mm-hmm. um, and I was answering a lot of questions, and then I batched them all up in in some frequently asked questions pages, um, and that that was sort of the the seed for both the, the connection with the A Cloud Guru uh, group and also with uh, a lot of other people understanding their problems that then turned into courses and uh, more videos and all sorts of things. So I wasn't planning on any of that. I was just trying to help people. Um, And that just helping people turned into something more. But I think that's actually, that would be one of my tips, is that focus on creating value for people, helping them, rather than on trying to market and build a brand. Yes, 100%. I think that's one of the things, I'm just going to be honest, and this might offend some people. I'm not trying to offend anybody because you guys that do this know who you are. But if... If when people interact with you, if 90% of your messaging back to them is, hey, go buy my ebook, hey, mm. go, go do my course, mm. hey, go do this, 
it it starts to feel very transactional. And so that's what I never wanted to be. And mm -hmm. that was another reason why for me, pushing away from the options that I had to market myself mm -hmm. and instead going to companies that again, that were already reaching the people I wanted to reach, helped me have kind of more genuine conversations with people around me. Cause I wasn't always like, hey, you know, you know, 50% off my ebook today, you know, go go buy it. And again, yeah. I know some people that that is their business. I'm not speaking against that, but that just wasn't who I wanted to be in those conversations. Right, right. Yeah, it's a little bit of a different style, I think, um, where they're being um, more more intentional about the the specific, like you said, transactions. Yes. Um, and uh, in other cases, um, people are a little bit more open armed of uh, just trying to offer, and then it it does come back, but not as measurably or or you can't necessarily follow exactly the trail. In some cases, you definitely can. Right. Um, but in some cases, it's just um, the the building of the brand of creating value then comes back um, in that more people have passed it on to their friend who passed yes. it on to their friend yes. and then they came and you don't see that connection, but there is one. Yeah. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another thing I would throw out there just as a tip to people that are getting into this space is yeah. don't ever um, waste a learning opportunity. Mm. So both in terms of you gaining new skills, mm -hmm. but then you turning around and talking about your experience gaining those new skills. Yeah. And that doesn't have to be like, you might not like to write. Hey, don't, don't you don't have to do blog posts. You don't have to go to Medium. You don't have That's to right. do DevTube or you know, wherever. Yeah. You can just, you know, maybe you just capture it by, by you just turn your webcam on and you say, hey, I've been working on this. And, you know, you just capture that kind of video. Uh -huh. Or maybe for you it is like, hey, you want to put up a sample project in GitHub, and then you wanna you know, shout out about it on Twitter or whatever the case is, mm -hmm. but take opportunities to engage because the first ever learning content that I created, the reason that I believe, and this is more years ago than I wanna mention, but the reason it was so powerful was because I was learning something, I was just sharing it with other people, and at the time, there were a lot of people who were trying to go through the same path I was going down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's even more true today than it was then, because if we look, I mean, all the things we hear, companies are continually trying to get people into new skills, right? Upskill their workforce. And so there's a lot of people out there trying to learn new things. So take advantage of those opportunities, and that will even help you build a community of learners that come around what you're doing. And then that'll give you opportunities. Like I said, maybe then you jump into a company like Pluralsight and you say, hey, I want to create content or do webinars yeah. or write blogs or do interactive content. There's so many options. Or it doesn't have to be Pluralsight. Go find another company to do that with but that will open up doors for you. Totally. Oh my goodness, that was a very dense, uh, full of lots of <laughs> awesome stuff. So uh, just uh, wanting to call out a few things. One of them is uh, not wasting a learning opportunity is a really key thing. So um, I, I have um, often found that when I'm trying to teach something to someone else, I learn it better myself. Yes. And so uh, a learning opportunity goes both ways there. And actually in, uh, in medicine, there's the see one, do one, teach one, right. where um, you're supposed to see a procedure done, then you do it yourself, and then right. you're supposed to teach someone else to really yes. understand because, uh, and this also ties into like the uh, the Feynman technique for learning, you, teaching someone forces you to come face to face with what you don't know about yes. that thing. Yes. But interestingly enough, you don't have to have all the answers. Right. In fact, you can share things of saying, and this is where I hit the wall and I didn't know what to do. Yes. And people can relate with that. They can get value from that. They feel like um, they're normal, that yep. they also are feeling the same thing and maybe they'll make some comments to say hey this is then this is where you can go next yes and then when you do that then you can now you have a follow-up yes. <laughs> so um i i don't mean to to monopolize this time here but another one of the things that you mentioned was um just turn on the camera and and get yes. something down and that reminded me of how um we don't have to publish everything that we yes. record mm -hmm. um I, I know that uh, in photography for example uh p some people have joked that the difference between a professional photographer and uh, the amateur is that the professional throws out 10,000 pictures to get that one right. and the amateur thinks that they're only taking the one and so right. it's not that great, right? Yeah. Um, but from our perspective, if we write stuff down, we don't have to publish it. We could just right. write it in our notepad yep. and then be like, yeah, that was dumb and yeah. not do anything with it. <laughs> I do that Absolutely. all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Another thing I would say on that is valuing the the content itself mm -hmm. more than the production quality. Yeah. Now I know oh, you and yeah. I both do a lot of videos and things and we we've we've geeked out about video <laughs> equipment and all the things. Yeah. But you know, I go back to when I started creating video content. I mean, I I probably at some point should tweet that out of how bad it was. Um, but the value was in getting the content out there because one of the things that people don't get in content creation, a lot of times we think, "Oh, the hard thing is the development skill or the cloud skill that I'm teaching." 
Well, that is a very hard thing in some mm. cases, but also creating that content is also a skill that needs to be learned, mm -hmm. and you'll get better over time. Kind of like your, your your thought there about the, the you know the professional photographer, you know better what to throw out, right? Yeah. But you're still throwing things out. Right. Nobody's going to be perfect every time, and so I think it's important too to get over that hump. If you have a way to capture content, do it. If, if that's just you opening your laptop and talking, great. You can capture that and you can upload that anywhere you want to upload it, and that's your content. And then yeah. you can get better over time, but don't feel like you have to get to the point where you know your video quality matches what you see other people do before you ever release anything. Totally agree. And actually, another thing I'd call out there is that um, the capturing quality from a technical standpoint and the communication uh, sort of uh, ability, like are you are you making the topic understood well? Yes. That's another part of it. And yes. the focus really needs to be a lot more on are you communicating it effectively, not on are you capturing it effectively. The right. camera doesn't really matter as much if they can see you. The, Correct. The microphone, if they can hear you. Yep. But what matters is, did it make sense? sense when you said it. Absolutely. And we, I can't remember if it was you and I or somebody else talking about this yesterday, but it was basically like, even us, like I would rather sit and watch horrible video quality if that person has the answer that I need yeah. than I would to sit there and listen to somebody blabber on who doesn't give me the information I need, but has the best video setup known to man. Right. And, and that's so true for anyone creating any type of content. It doesn't matter again, if it's written, if it's whatever. Yeah. So value that and get better at that skill. But another piece that's so important is when you actually push these things out to learners, listen to their feedback. Yeah. Because you'll often find, they'll say, oh, I had trouble in this one spot. And they're uh -huh. like, well, oh, of course, they didn't know this other thing that I didn't tell any, I didn't tell them that. And you'll learn to get better and you'll learn to anticipate where maybe your teaching would, would run into a roadblock because, you know, oh, there's some essential skill you just, you didn't cover, you thought people already knew. Right. Uh, yeah. So the empathy with the people who are going through that is such a valuable thing. And mm -hmm. I think that's um, what you're getting at when you're listening to what their feedback is instead yes. of uh, um, uh, getting sort of uh, up about it and saying, oh, right. no, no, no. What I wrote is great. Right. Saying, oh, well, tell me more. What What yes. is that the issue there? Yeah. Because we can always improve. Yes. Um, and I, I have found that to be the case very much in my case, uh, my courses, yep. my videos or whatever. Yep. Um, I I, I get much better by listening to the critical, constructive feedback of yep. other people, or even not necessarily a, you should do this, but a, I just didn't get this. Exactly. Um, and that's an indication to me, oh, 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 I, I had made a, an assumption, and that assumption is wrong. And whether the assumption is um, that they would have already known it, uh, that then maybe I should um, explain, oh, well, if you don't know this, that's okay, go and read this other thing first, right. or maybe I'll just do a quick... Uh, 30 second explanation or um, maybe, I don't know, whatever the, the result is, but yeah. understanding that there are real people that are in that spot. So yeah. respect that. So, And in addition, I would say yeah. when you're preparing this content as, as a new content creator, I would say push into your difficulties because if you're hitting a difficulty as you're getting ready to like, if you're learning something and then getting ready to teach it, mm. most other people who are going through that content are gonna run into the same thing. So that gives you an opportunity to say, hey, I'm not just gonna skip over this. This is a focus area because this is maybe one of the best learning opportunities that exists within this content. I love that. And actually that ties so much, I think, into imposter syndrome. Yes. Because so often when we're making content, we think I should know this. Yeah. But no, not necessarily, yep. right? Like the, the fact of the matter is that we're all learning a lot of stuff. None of us can know all of the things right. and we need to get over those humps, but other people are hitting the same exact problems, just like you said. Yeah, and, and I'll kind of pull back the curtain a little bit. So sure, I do yeah. a monthly series, uh, Cloud Builder Live for Pluralsight and, yeah. and ACG, and people might look at that series and think, oh, David doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I value the learner's time. Yeah. So ahead of time, I probably spend a good six hours preparing all the content that's going to go into that live stream. Mm. So people don't see me like type in the wrong things and then be like, oh, no, this is broken. What happened? Uh, but let me just tell you, like w during those six hours, sometimes I say, oh, my gosh, that's broken. What happened? Right. Yeah. There, there are still those kinds of moments. We just we, we try to value the learner's time. So we're, we're condensing things in and you don't have to sit through me just looking puzzled at the camera. But that still happens to us. Us, right. And so I think the important thing for people to understand is, yeah, you getting over everybody has challenges. Sometimes they're different. Um, but when you're creating that content, like I said, find areas to push in where you can help other people over some of the same hum humps that you struggle with. And again, that's not making you different from people that create content full time. We're all in that same boat.
Absolutely. Um, when you say six hours to make that one hour of prep, yes. I don't think that that's enough time. I would need more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the the point is that we're all going to be in different spots. And yes. um, I'm I'm thinking that uh, it's only six hours because you've actually been uh, getting into that, rehearsing it, and uh, getting good at, at prepping like that. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if in a lot of cases it takes more time. Um, yeah, it, it certainly has too. But here's another great point to mention alongside that is – as you really focus in and you build your efforts in a certain format of content, mm -hmm. then obviously you gain efficiencies over time. You yeah. learn. One of the things that still, I'll be honest with you, that's still hard for me that I'm still working on is with the live stream content that I've been doing is figuring out the right amount of content to cover in a one hour live stream. Mm -hmm. I think the first time I prepped that, I had probably three times the amount of content I needed. Yeah. And then I overcorrected <laughs> two episodes later and it was like 30 minutes. I'm like, oh, oh no. I guess I'm almost done. Yeah. Um, and so there's again, any there's questions. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hope there's a lot of questions. Yeah. So it's all, again, it's all learning. And, mm -hmm. and again, content creation is just as much of a skill as the development skills that we teach. And so, again, don't be afraid of messing up on that. That's a part of getting better and learning over time. I love it. Um, getting better and learning over time, I think, is such a core thing to all of what we do in technology. I've said it many times that um, as people working in technology, our primary skill is our ability to learn yes. because whatever we learn is going to start decaying basically yes. in value immediately. So um, I think that uh, jumping into creating content like you've uh, been talking about um, is a great way for people to move themselves forward, even if it doesn't turn into something else. But if that's what they're doing, they're moving themselves forward, it very possibly will also turn into yep. something else. So uh, if as a closing sort of yep. thought, uh, what is what is one tip that we haven't talked about or that you want to reemphasize that, that the, a key takeaway for people? Um, I, I mean, we've kind of have talked about it, but I just want to reiterate this because yeah. I think this is the most one of the most critical pieces is, again, connect with somebody that already has the eyeballs you want to reach mm -hmm. and then just continually practice practice creating your content and pushing it out there. And I believe it will find an audience that's interested in it if you're passionate enough about those concepts that you're teaching. I love it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to join us here. Um, where can people find you online? Absolutely. So they can find me at davidtucker.net. And then from there, you can go find my Pluralsight courses. You can see a big wall of all the different videos I've done lately on YouTube. So you can click in and watch any of those. And uh, yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. But you can certainly follow me on Twitter as well, underscore David Tucker underscore underscore David Tucker underscore. Awesome. Yes. Well, um, thank you again. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with me today. And uh, uh, thank you all as well for yes. joining us. I hope that uh, uh, you, David, and all the rest of you have a really great rest of your day. Take care. <laughs>